Terrence Hayes, Four Premonitions of Migration. To grasp the inextricable ghost riding you into an inexplicable future, you must place your lips to panel 13 until you taste something human in the colors of the dirt. To suit present life, you must revise, quote, the crops were left to dry and rot, there was no one left to tend them, unquote. To read, quote, the cops were left to cry and shoot, there was no one left to defend them, unquote. To perceive the ghost in this particular picture, you must imagine the orb above the field is your eye waiting for bones or buds to erupt. But let's just head uptown. Someone there is throwing a child named Jacob Lawrence a party. It is fine to walk without speaking to each other if we are walking beside a pair of tracks or a river with no burning bodies in it. I wonder where the land of freedom really is. Not Ohio, maybe Canada, Guadalajara, someday maybe the Congo. Outside, it is always tomorrow. At some point, I'll be boxed and stuffed in a suit I currently mistakenly believe I'll never be caught dead in. 2015, 2040, some other year that's a fistful of syllables. Then in 2115, whoever discovers panel 13 will assume the orb above the field is an apocalyptic spaceship. Migration can, of course, be spatial as well as mental, spiritual, and temporal. Could black people be incarnations of time? Yes, because time, like the Negro, carries the past as if it was a rucksack holding the Sunday dress, a mother and daughter walking north, sewed from the suit of a corpse left to dry and rot in Dixie. Each of the techniques useful in the transferal of dirt requires work against gravity. The dress seems to get heavier, I imagine, though each night, when the ladies stop to inspect it beside a shy campfire, they find it is the same old dress, only a bit less clean. They do not sense you and me in the dirt overshadowing the fields, or know that dirt, by definition, is made of history. <laughs>